Hello students, in this video we'll prove the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, which is given here, using Lagrange multipliers. Cauchy-Schwarz says that if I take the inner product of the two vectors x and y, and for this problem we'll just assume that x and y are not negative to make my life a little bit easier, and so if I do the sum from 1 to n of x, j, y, j, that is no more than the sum of the squares of the x, j's square rooted times the sum of the squares of the y, j's square rooted. So we're going to prove this inequality using Lagrange multipliers. I'm going to set a to be the sum, j goes from 1 to n of x, j squared, and I'm going to set b to be the sum j goes from 1 to n of the yj squared. And my goal is with these two constraints, so this constraint has the form g equals a, and this constraint has the form h equals b. Those are my two constraints. I'm going to find the max min of this function f of x1 through xn, y1 through yn, which is exactly given by this, just the sum j goes from 1 to n of x, j, y, j. That's my objective. And so what does Lagrange multipliers tell us we can do? It says we equate the gradients are proportional, so by Lagrange multipliers, it says that the gradient of f is equal to lambda times the gradient of your first constraint, plus another constant sigma times the gradient of your second constraint. Okay. So let's compute this. What's the gradient of f? Well, the gradient of f is going to be y1, y2, yn, because those are the derivatives of the first variables. I have an x1, y1, so the derivative of x1 will be y1, the derivative of x2 will be y2, etc. And then I have all the x's after that, x1, x2, xn. This is equal to what? This is equal to lambda times the gradient of g. What will the gradient of g be? Well, the gradient of g is going to be 2x1, 2xn, but then there's no y's in the g constraint, so I get a whole bunch of zeros. Zero. Plus sigma, then I get the reverse. I get a whole bunch of zeros first because there's no x's, and then I get a whole bunch of 2y's. 2y1, 2yn. And so from this expression over here, what can we conclude? From this, we can conclude that the yi's, so yi, is equal to 2 lambda xi. And we can conclude from this what? We can conclude um, that um, the xi are equal to 2 sigma yi. All right? Now what we'll do is we'll take this, I know, by the constraint over here, that if I sum these expressions up over here and square them, I have to get b. So in other words, if I take the sum, j goes from 1 to n of 4 lambda squared xj squared, okay? That's exactly yj squared. That has to add up to b. So this is b over here. But 4 lambda is just a constant, 4 lambda squared is just a constant, that's 4 lambda squared times what? The sum of the xj, but the sum of the xj are equal to a, so that's going to be an a. So now I have a relationship between a and b, and from this I can conclude what? This tells me that lambda is going to be equal to what? So I divide by a, and then take the square root, so I'm going to get a 1 half, because that's the square root of 4, and then I'm going to have a root b over a. That's what we're going to have for lambda. So now I have what lambda is equal to, so once I know lambda, I have a relationship between x and, so of course this is plus minus, the minus is going to give us the absolute minimum it can be, right, plus minus those things. And so now the relationship is that, this I can update this relationship, therefore yi, this relationship becomes yi is equal to 2 lambda, well the two, this 2 over here and this 2 are going to cancel out, I'm just going to have the square root of b over a times xi with a plus or minus, right? So let's just focus on the plus for the time being. So in other words, what will the maximum be? So in other words, now I have the sum, j goes from 1 to n of xj, yj will be no more than the value at this point over here, which is going to be the sum, j goes from 1 to n of xj times the square root of b over a times xj because that's what y is. And now this is xj squared, so this is going to be root of b over a times what? It's less than or equal to, because this is going to be the maximum value. Of course, the minimum value is going to have a negative over here. So, and then this xj's just add up to what? Add up to a. 
So this is exactly equal to what? This is exactly equal to just the square root of A times B. So what have we just shown over here? We've just shown over here, of course, the, the minimum is going to be the negative. We've just shown that the absolute value, well, let's just write like this. We've just shown that the sum j goes from 1 to n of xj, yj is no more than the sum j goes from 1 to n of xj squared to the 1 half times the sum j goes from 1 to n of yj squared to the 1 half. And that's exactly equal to the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Thank you very much.